Okay, so good morning, everyone. So today we're gonna we're gonna try to do the chapter seventeen, like a principal component analysis, which is the PTA. So this one is actually kind of like a little bit, little bit, I would say, different compared to the to the machine learning technique with that we have covered so far. So I'm gonna try to explain what PCA is and then how to conduct this kind of model for the data science purposes. And then, yeah, especially in R and then especially we're gonna, the, the packages we, we usually use. So, okay, so here, here it is. So as you can see here, cause this one is a, this screenshot actually is a kind of a my screenshot of the my iPad, iPad screen. So I think that there might be the, a lot of highlighting and then uh, my writing things. So maybe this one. I hope that these kind of things gonna be help you to help you to figure out what this this is about. So, okay. So in here it says about the. PCA, like a principal component analysis, is a method like a finding the low dimensional representation of the data set that retains as much as the original variation as possible. So what does this mean is actually in here, in this one, can you see the that the my writing tool? Like uh okay. yes, a blue. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we can see it. Yeah. yeah, actually, in here, authors explain the what the PCA is a little bit difficult way, because uh, this one is actually also correct mathematically, and then uh, this one actually explains very succinctly about the, what the PCA is about. But for me, it is a little bit hard to understand because I understand what the, what this means, but. It is a little bit difficult to understand about the exactly what this one is about in a, a little more, maybe we can explain about the, what the PCA is a little bit more easily way. So I'm gonna try to do that here. So what does this mean is like a low dimensional representation of the data set is the kind of like a, sometimes when we actually have a, maybe for example, when we actually have a table, like data table like this. And then we have a row observation, like a OBS, observation one, observation two, as a kind of row. And then we have a column one, column two, do, 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 and then maybe column, maybe something 20, 12, or maybe we keep going on. So this one is a kind of like, a, kind of like our, our data, usually we, what we usually see when we try to look at the data data set as a table. And then what's the main issue about the, this kind of data is sometimes actually we, each column represents about the variable, right? But sometimes too many multivariate variable, like a too many variables sometimes have a too, compl too complex kind of uh, information or analysis. And then uh, sometimes some of the some of the columns gonna be have a highly correlated to each other. Right? That might be possible. So so what the PCA does is actually in when we try to do the thinking about the how each of the, these columns is uh, co related together. Like uh, our question is is how each variable going to be correlated one another. Maybe if we have a too many variable in our model, it due to the, those kind of a complexity characteristic of the, our data set, maybe we, it is very hard to, sometimes it is very hard to answer these questions about the how each variable correlated to one another. Okay. Can you see this one more uh, clearly or do you want me to zoom out 
uh, zoom in more, uh, zoom in or make it, make it bigger or something. Oh, okay. So. Is that okay? No, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so to answer this question is quite complicated and then quite difficult. Like uh, for example, like uh, if we have a uh, twenty twenty variable in this case, okay, that means how we can try to try to calculate the correlation between the this variable is okay. Like a correlation is the two between the two variables. So twenty multiplied by nineteen, and then divided by two multiplied by one. This is the 190 cases, correlations, calculation should be required, which is the very time consuming and then a computer in intensive. And also, as I can say, sometimes when we looking at the sum of the table, we actually, some of the column has a kind of curve maybe, for example, C1 and C2 is the point A, like a correlation, that means C1 and C2 is highly correlated to each other, and then we don't have to use both of them inside our model. Maybe instead, we have to thinking about how we can how we can explain the, those kind of a correlation or variations by simplifying the simplifying these two columns into the one one single one single column or one single some representative. Uh, uh, variables. That's the what PCA does. So in here, I actually says about the. Sometimes we have a, a lot of uh, complexity of the information in the data inside the table. So what the PCA goal is, we have to reducing the large number of the correlated variable into the very few uncorrelated variables. Okay, so by reduce this this kind of things is what is called the reducing dimension dimension of the data. Cause so we can actually say about is uh, the each column can have a dimension. So maybe if we have a uh, twenty columns, it says about uh, we have a uh, twenty twenty. 20 dimension of the measurement inside the table. So what the PCA does is we actually PCA is aimed to the reducing the these kind of dimensions by simplifying the our variable. But the thing is, these kind of uncorrelated variables should be explained the variation of the original kind of a correlated variable. That's the kind of a main goal of the this. Uh, this chapter and then uh, this one is actually main theoretical summary of the what PCA should do. Okay, so in here at the end of the these paragraphs, it says about the our goal is to use the small set of the this linear feature combination, which is the few uncorrelated variable. This one is un uncorrelated variable. And then that one is actually cause principal uh principal component, which is the PCs. Okay. So by using the these principal components, we actually try to try to explain the all as many as many variations as possible into the model. Okay. Yeah, Ricardo. Yeah, you are right. Cause uh, you, yeah, there is actually a lot of a uh, a lot of a uh, useful site and useful video clips that explains about the PCAs, and then I just wanted to explain about the definition of the component analysis is a more conceptual way. Cause uh, what the PCA does is uh, by reducing the this kind of a dimension of the ta uh, data set or variable, we can actually simplify the variations across the that variable inside the model. And then and then PCA actually allows us to do that as a kind of a more like a standardized kind of a 
score of indexing score approaches that represents the uh, variations be uh, between the low, between the original correlated variable. Okay, so any questions so far, anything? Uh, yeah, I also uh, posted an article uh -huh. about PCA assumptions, which are uh, important, just like, just like binary regression, that it assumes certain features from the data. Uh, you know, to you know, to 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 give the the results, uh, you know, some validity. Okay, and one of the things that the PCA assumes is that the the variables are linear, linear are related. Okay, if you have non-linear components, uh, that won't be captured in the PCA. Okay, so uh, have that in mind because uh, most of the data that we uh, encounter in the real world is, is non-linear, okay? Yeah, correct, so, yeah. Know, just, just have that you know, uh, uh, assumption because sometimes PCA, and I have tried to, you know, uh, to use this to precisely reduce the dimensionality of the data when I have you know, a, a lot of variables. Mm -hmm. And usually if they're non-linear, uh relationships uh it, it really it really, it really doesn't work okay so it yeah. has some it has some limitations mm -hmm. on, yeah. the, on the criticality of it so you have to use other other unsupervised uh, mm -hmm. uh learning algorithms mm -hmm. yeah that's the reason why i actually says here is how each variable correlated to one another in this question because uh, to to the uh, um like a like a uh, ability to calculate the, these kind of correlations value that actually ba uh, based on the assumption that is each dimensions of the of the variable inside our data has a kind of a linear kind of a relationship. So without linear relationships across the this column like a variable it is not possible to use the, this kind of a PCA analysis. And then, uh, and then at the bottom, I'm going to try to explain about the, a little bit more detail about the, how linear combination should be established inside the uh, uh, PCA, okay? So in here, in here uh, this book actually uses about the three different packages, which is the we already know uh, quite familiar with. Especially if one one is the H two O and then the GG plot and DPLIR. DP DPLIR is kind of a cleaning the data set, and GG plot is for the plotting, and then H two is our primary primary uh, machine learning uh uh technique uh packages. But on and also I'm gonna try to exp, uh, introduce about the one more packages, which is the psych psych package, P S I C H. Yeah, here. This one is actually also actually one of the very common common or basic, uh, packages that contains a lot of uh, a lot of functions related to the. Uh, principal component analysis and also factor analysis. Cause uh, one of the these actually I did I forgot to answer the the things is when we thinking about the reductions of the dimension of the data. When we thinking about the technique related to the uh, reducing the the data dimension, there is actually two kinds of the technique. One is the PCA, which is the we actually cover in this chapter, like a principal component analysis. The other one is actually what is called the factor analysis, which is the FA. That one is like a factor analysis. Okay. What factor analysis actually do is the pretty the same thing, but the thing is a factor analysis is a more like a focusing on about the exploring the what is called the latent variable between the column. 
that means what the, what the latent variable means is by combining the by reducing the these kind of uh, dimensions, we can actually thinking about the thinking about the what's the what's the character attributes behind the, those kind of uh, uh dimensions or those kind of a variable. Okay, and then in these cases, we actually have it, we actually have uh, some of the correlations between even if we can also even consider about the correlations between the those kind of factors. Okay. In the PCA, we some we usually focusing on about the uncorrelated variable, but also PCA can be considered about the uh, about the correlations of the principal components. But the thing is, that in case of the FA, like a factor analysis is a more like a aims to the estimate of the latent variable and then uh, thinking about the, what's the interaction between the those factors as inside uh, another model of uh, model across the factors. And then uh, that factor also represents the represents the variations of the uh, of the original correlated variable. Okay. So PCA and factor analysis is the two main techniques about the when it comes to the reducing the dimension of the data. And then uh, when we think about the factor analysis, there is also two things. One is the EFA, which means exploratory factor analysis. And uh, the other one is the CPA, which is the conformatory, conformatory factor analysis. Okay. So exploratory factor analysis is a more more like a basic techniques of the factor analysis, which is the just kind of exploring the that latent variable and then just kind of seeing the what's the interaction between them, and then the CFA is a more like a more like a structure equation modeling approaches, more more focusing on about the causality, causal relationship between the variable or factors. So when we try to think about the CFA, like a conformatory factor analysis, we actually reducing the those dimensions as a factor. And then after that, we actually try to focusing about the more like a causal relationship, which is the indirect and direct effect across the factor. That actually allows us to the predict the, some of the uh some of the outcome and then also allows in uh, based on the more like a causality of the relationship under the factors, okay? So that's the how how it works. And then, and then, and then in here, I, as a prerequisite, psych packages actually both, has the both PCA and factor analysis functions, which is the principal functions and FA function for the factor analysis. And then a scree is a kind of a uh, function for the what is called a scree plot function to recognize to figure out the number of uh, principal components we have to use to optimizing our model, which I'm gonna explain later. But anyway, in here I'm gonna try to add in introduce the more one more packages called the psych package P S Y C H. That is the package name. Okay. So that one also contains a lot of uh, relevant functions for the PCA, okay? In here, we act, we're we gonna use the what is called the my basket data set that contains about the purchasing transaction of the grocery store item data. And then we, as you can see here, when we looking at the, looking at the number of rows and column in by using the dimension functions, we have a uh, 20 different section and then a uh, 42 dimensions or column, number of column is the 42. Okay, and then uh, that is also number of uh, maybe potentially correlated variable. So we have in that table, we have a 42 column 
with the potential correlations across the one another, across the variable. Okay. And then, and then as Ricardo mentions, to do the PCA, we actually have a have a this kind of four different kind of a assumption or requirement gonna be gonna be considered. So maybe data is a tidy format, maybe the uh, any missing value is uh, imputing and removal means a kind of a basic assumption. That means in case of the second options is that we actually have a complete data set. Okay. That means no missing value inside the data. That that without the, uh, when you there is a missing values in the data set, actually R what R does it does is R actually just kind of a list wide deletion of the that that observation and then a run the analysis. Or sometimes depending on the functions, sometimes it generating the error, which is the which, uh, that shows that shows that there is a lack of the completions of the table. So before you working on the PCA, you have to remove the all of the missing value by using the list wide deletions, or maybe you can think about the imputation of the values to feeling like a feeding the these missing values by looking at the uh, by looking at the other similar observation data set okay and then typically data must be the numeric value yeah as ricardo says without any kind of a linear relationship and also linear relationship actually assumes about the, our data set is the highly numeric or maybe interval or continuous kind of attributes. And also number four is the numeric data should be standardized. What does this mean is we actually reduce the dimensions across the column, right? C1, C2, C3, blah, 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 like this. So we actually figure out that there might be the correlations, but the thing is sometimes when we're looking at the tables, each column has the different kind of a scale or measurement system, right? In that case, what we actually do is we have to standardize, standardize the uh, columns, like a variables. How we can do is maybe we can calculate about the G-score which is uh, observation value, uh, subtract, uh, subtract the observation value from the our mean, that, that mean divided by the standard deviation, like STD. Okay, so by using this G-score, maybe we can standardize the, this uh, value or these columns values, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Angel says, yeah, it also, PCA also contains about the base R, yeah, like a PRCOM, uh, PRCOMP, yes. And then, and then by using the, this kind of a G score to standardize the our value, that actually allows us to the com compare or calculate the correlations or variations across the column. Like a comparisons across, make the features comparison. What does this means is to make to make the each column gonna be compared to the one another. That to do that we have to standardize our data set. Okay. So that's the thing, and then what's the basic ideas of the of the our principal component analysis? So as you can see here, when you're looking at the our our table of the uh, table and then uh, each table, our table actually consists of the, like this, like uh, observation, trend, observation one, which is the transaction one, two, three, et cetera, and then a uh, 2000. And then uh, our column is, uh, first column is maybe cheese, and then uh, Burmers, 
like this, and then a mayonnaise, etc. And then we have a uh, forty-two items, and then we have a uh, two thousand transactions, right? And then uh, we can actually standardize. Actually, this table is already calculated the standardized value across the column, like items. But by using, but you sometimes you have to calculate in of your own. But anyway, so when we try to looking at the correlation between the possible combination of the items, like between item one and item two, here is the kind of a result. And then maybe when the you purchasing the cheese and then the the correlation between the purchasing the mayonnaise is the 0.345, which is the quite which is the highest the correlations between the these two items. And then the other one is a burmers and post fosters is the three point three point uh three 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 five and then a uh, cheese and bread is the three twenty. So as you can see here, these kind of things is a kind of like a highly correlated, right? That means whenever you purchasing the cheese, you actually have a higher, more likely to uh, purchasing the like a mayonnaise or maybe bread or something. So in this case, maybe we can think about the grouping the these cheese and mayonnaise and bread, and then we can reduce simplifying the our 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 uh, variable complexity that uh, by using the uh by representing the these kind of a correlation variations as a one single principal component variable. So this is the kind of a first step that you have to do when you try to do the PCA, like uh, figuring out the what's the correlations across the our columns in the table, and then. What our aim is to explain the those common attributes as uh in a lower dimensionality rather than using the original data set. Okay. And then it's gonna be help us to the many features in our data set in a simple way while maintaining about the their while reflecting the their their variations as as much as possible. Okay. That's the what PCA does. And then uh, in the 17.3 is more like a theory, uh, mathematical approaches about the how PCA has to do. So as you can see here, like uh, mm, in here, you can see these are the kind of a formula up here. So actually, this one like a Jera kind of things is uh, these these two actually represents of the what is called the uh, what is called the uh, loading factor, like a PCA loading. So that means we actually grouping uh, grouping the each of the each of the variable row variable by using the, this kind of a factor rolling like a weighting variable to explain the, those kind of a variations. And also, as Ricardo said, it is actually kind of a linear combination. So when you're looking at the, these formulas, it is actually basic basic formula of the, of the linear combination of the, of the factor variable, like a PCA calculations, okay? So C1 is the principal components. And then this G1 actually consisting of the of the all of the factor loading kind of a weighting of the all possible kind of a variable across the, our column. Okay. And then and then what we can do is the we actually calculating about the eigenvector corresponding to the Largest eigenvalue of the feature covariance matrices is a kind of a, our goal to the PCA components. 
to finding the more like uh, optimizing the value, uh, uh, optimizing way of the reducing the our dimensions by you by combining the maximizing the our eigen vector values. Okay, what is called the single vector decomposition kind of techniques, you know, mathematically. So in here. It says about that you can see here when you're thinking about the these are the kind of uh, transactions of the scatter plot between the uh, between the item one and item two. What the PCA component does is the first first the PCA is the kind of a uh, rotating of the x axis here to that represents of the minimal squared square error that reflects the variations of the these kind of transactions. So maximum variation, explain the uh, largest variations across the our features. And then a second one is the second largest variations, which is the orthogonal, uh, uh, orthogonal kind of a projection, which is the like a 90 degree kind of a projections. So, what this one actually does is tells us is the PCA is the kind of a matter of the rotating of the of the component uh, of the features across the features by using the this kind of a principal components that reflects the largest variations across the these kind of features. Actually, this scatter plot in in the book, it only contains about the, this kind of a one single scatter plot. But if we have a 20, 20 features, we have to draw the 190 plots for this. And then, and then we actually have each component, PC1 and PC2, of course, the all of the, this kind of a plus. And then we actually think about the, how we can reduce the, all of the, these things by using the simplifying the our our variable into the principal components. If we have a three variable, it's gonna be have a three dimensional kind of a you know kind of a uh space, okay? Feature space. So when you can see here in case of the PC3 and PC1, we actually have a one one single vector plane that actually reflects the minimal square error and then a largest explanation. And then the second one is the PC2, which is the orthogonal to the PC3 and PC1. And then we actually complain the second, uh, uh, explain the second largest variations across the D transaction in this case. And then when we have uh, maybe four or five or maybe N, kind of a, a PCs that actually, we actually talk about the hyper vector spaces, that spaces we cannot draw physically as a plot, right? So, but the thing is uh, theoretically and mathematically, we can actually thinking about the four components or five PC principal components. Maybe if we have a kind of a 100 or maybe 1000 kind of a column, as a variable, in that cases, maybe we can thinking about the simplifying the 20, maybe 15 kind of a principal components sometimes, for example. In this case, yeah, we cannot draw those kind of a scatter plot in a, in a physical way. So these kind of a PC spaces, we only thinking can be explain about the more like a hyperspace kind of approaches in a mathematical way, okay? So now chapter 17.4 is how we can perform in the PCA in R, okay? So in here, we actually says about the, by using the H2O and then H2O prim, uh, PR, PCO, MP, this one, we can actually have a lot of, uh, by using the some of the arguments, we can actually implementing the PCAs by using the our example data. So in the this functions has the several arguments, like a PCA method, 
what the PCA method PC, PCA method does is sometimes when we have a numerical data set, we actually have a PCA grams a single vector decomposition. Maybe if we have a categorical or ordinal variable as a numeric value, we actually using the GLRM kind of approaches to reflect those kind of categorical kind of items. And then a K is a kind of a number of PCs we want to simplify, compute. So K2 means we're gonna reducing the, our dimensions of the data into the two principal components, okay? And then how we can define the K, this one is the, our input, our input variable. Because how many, how many pin principal components we have to use for our analysis is uh, our intuition of the data. Okay, and then uh, in the later section, I'm going to try to explain about the, how we can figure out the more optimizing number of the principal components by using the more like a statistical approaches in the later section. But anyway, K is going to be determined by the uh, researchers. Okay, that's the reason why principal components analysis is the one type of the supervised machine learning technique. Okay. And then a transform is the, how we can standardize the, our, our, our value in the each column. And then the impute missing is the, how we can deal with the missing value inside if there is a ones in the table. And then a runtime sec, a runtime means is a kind of a limitation of the learning time for the that analysis to, uh, to get the, our estimation of the principal component analysis result more efficient, okay? So that's the how it looked like in here. Like a training frame is the our data set and then a PCA method in here, like a G, uh, gram S, uh, SVD, because we all, all of us, all the column inside our table has the numeric value. And then a uh, K is the N column is a, this one is a just kind of a using the using the 42 features as a kind of a PCs, which means we don't have any intention to the to the reducing the, our column. Maybe we sometimes we actually thinking about the K is five or six, etc. But in here it actually have a number of column for the K for the initial kind of a full model approaches. And then the transform is a standardized and then the input to missing is a true means that we're gonna calculate the, those missing value. And then the max learning time is a 10,000 second means we have to get the result at least the 10, 000, within the 10,000 second, even if, uh, even if the table is complicated, okay? And then here is the result. Because uh, we actually using the all of the each column as a principal components, that's the reason why we have a forty two principal components result. And then as you can see here, PC one should be the ones with the largest portion of the variance, which is the point zero five four five seven zero. And then cumulative portion is the this. Because uh, what the this one does is. When the number of components is increases, that actually is a matter of the accumulations of the variation. That means whenever we consider the more principal components inside the, our model, that actually cumulate uh, cumulative, uh, cumulative kind of portions. So actually 0.16284 is the 0 0.054570 plus 0 0.051714. That actually gives us the this number. Okay. It's the same way for the PC3. We are actually adding the this number and then we can get the this cumulative kind of a portion result. Okay. So that's the kind of a how you can uh Exp uh, interpret the this result and then uh, this this kind of a portion of a variance actually reflects about the 
each com each component how much variations each component explain for the for the original kind of a correlated variable okay and then when we're looking at the these kind of a, a principal components point we can easily find that the, there might be the sum of the grouping factors we can use like here 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 maybe here this this said that the this actually says that the in case of the this kind of a p in terms of the pc1 in this case the principal components actually this item at the top of the this item is a highly highly reflect the variations of the of the pc1 okay pc1 actually contains about the very explanatory power of the these items rather than the or rest of the these items okay that's the how you can explain or figuring out when you're looking at the these plot so it is a, it it is a says that the PC one actually usually explains about the variations of the farmers or red wine or something whiskey or something. Okay, this one is a more like a so uh, more like a hot drink kind of a kind of a component, right? Item item for the liquor, right? For the dirt, so. That means the PC1 actually reflects about the variation of the what is called the liquor related items. Okay. That's how you can infer from the these kind of a principal components components based on the variations across the, uh exploring the variation across the item. Okay. So whenever you're looking at the in here, especially in here. Whenever you're looking at the, this kind of a PC1 and PC2 plot, you can actually easily find about the, this kind of a grouping item. When there is a clear relationship across the table, and then uh, these kind of things actually give us kind of a more insight about the how, how, how PC1 and PC2 can be explained uh, each items variation of the each items, okay? And then, and then now our question is, okay, now we can figure, we can intuitively figure out about the, okay, this kind of a potential variation grouping gonna be possible. But the thing, the problem is we cannot, if we have a maybe 42 or 50 column of the variable and then reducing the, with reducing the certain number of PCs, our question now is how to determine the number of PCs for optimize for optimizing, I would say, our principal components analysis results. Okay. To answer the question is this section, like a selecting the number of principal components. There is a four possible, three possible way to do that. First one is the calculating the eigenvector criteria, uh, eigen eigenvalue, and then second one is the proportion. Thinking about the proportion of the variance explained, and then the third one is what is called the skew flat portions. Okay. So first thing is about the eigenvalue criterion is kind of a, depending on the number of a variable entered into the PCAs. And then we can actually calculating about the more like a standardized value of the eigenvector. And then this eigenvector actually have a, have a positive value. And then what the eigenvector value one means, like a principal components would explain about the one variable worth of the variability. That means eigenvector one means principal components only explain the one variable variable variability. Okay, 
So our goal in this case is how we can maximize the, this kind of eigenvector value to reducing the, our PC model, okay? So that's the, how you can calculating the, these things. And then here is the kind of eigenvector value. And then the number one, eigenvector one is the basic cutoff. So, so our goal is the our PC gonna be explained the more than eigenvector eigenvalue more than one. Okay. <clears throat> that means when you're looking at the this kind of a number of a, number of a PCs and then calculating the eigenvector of the depending on the then number of PCs, we can say here is 10, 8, uh, 10, 9, 8. Here. Right? So as you can see here, uh when the uh eigenvector is the more than one until we get to the point of the number of principal components is one. Okay. Maybe if we maybe one eight or nine sometimes. Maybe if we increase the, our principal components more than ten. In this case, in here, eigen our eigenvalue is the less than one, right? That means our principal components on explains the variation of the variable less than one. That doesn't make sense, right? Because our PC actually aims to the explain the more than one variable uh, variation is the more than uh, variation of the more than one variable, right? That should be, that means that our, our eigenvalue of the PC should be the more than one. So to optimizing the, our simpli simplifying the model, our PC in this plot, our number of uh, principal components should be uh, eight at maximum, okay? That's the how you can interpret the, this plot, okay? And then the second one is that we actually looking at the our variance because uh, when you looking at the our result in here, we actually calculating about the portion of the variance and then the cumulative proportions by using the these two estimations. We can actually draw the these kind of a cumulative. The first one is the cumulative cumulative variation. And then the second one is the just kind of, but not the cumulative. Like this one is the kind of same, uh, same plot as, as this, okay? Like eigenvector plot, eigenvalue plot, okay? So our goal in this case is maybe we wanted to explain the if cumulative in, in terms of the cumulative of the variations our goal is the uh, is the our goal should be explained the uh, our principal components should be explained the more than 0.75 in this case that means our principal components should be the less than 27 uh, no more than the 27 i mean to to explain the more than cumulative proportion of the variance of more than 0.75 in this case, theoretically. And then in the eigenvector value in here, like the PVE variations also the same. Maybe if we can have a variance explained is the kind of a less than 0 0.02 in this example, maybe 20 gonna be the our, our number for the for the principal components in this case. So actually what this one actually does is that depending on the what kind of a cutoff value we can choose, actually this one tends to be overestimate of, uh, uh, of the number of the principal components, which means sometimes this one may not be, make, may, may not uh, make sense at all, which means including the 27 principal components out of the 42, this one is not the, what is called the effective kind of a approaches or efficient, efficient kind of a algorithm approaches for the machine learning perspectives. 
because it's a too many principal components in this case. Okay, so that's the reason why this one is over tends to be overestimated in this criterion. So one last thing we actually looking at the when we determine the number of principal components, the one last way we can do is what is called as drawing the spree plot, which is this by using the these kind of a variation explain things. And then we can actually think about the this kind of a elbow kind of a uh, kind of a threshold things. So rule of thumbs about the, this kind of a script plot is we actually looking at the those number like a PC number of a PC number dip, about the elbow kind of a plot like a dip, like a, when the slope is the rapidly changes after the that number that number gonna be the number of principal components we have to choose for the our optimization of the model okay so. Actually, in here, I actually explain about the three different way of the determining the number of components. But the thing is, I'm strongly recommend you to using the this script plot criterion, because the script plot criterion actually clearly show us about the this kind of a elbow, kind of a threshold point, and then at that threshold point actually represents about the our optimal principal component number which is the A in this case, okay? So that means in our data set, like a 42 variable of the transaction table uh, to optimizing principal components, number of principal components should be A. That means we can actually explain the variations of the 42 different variable inside the that transaction table by using the eight uncorrelated variable, which is the principal components inside our model, okay? That's the how this one works. And then in here, it in here does not explain about the everything, every aspect of the principal components. When you try to using the these pieces, like a Z1, do the G8 is kind of like a combination is a G11, X1 plus G12, X2 plus one, uh, 120, X20, right? Uh, X, uh, when 42 and 42. Because uh, our, our, when you're looking at the, the formula in the previous chapter, each each principal component is the kind of a linear combination, like a linear sum of the linear linear combination of the all of the these forty two variable, right? So when you calculating the this kind of a variable by using the principal component loading, that actually give us about the what is called the index four, which means the principal. PC component, the principal component the score. That score tends to be have a very standardized score. And then uh, whenever when you're looking at the, some of the research article about the indexing score analysis by using the principal component analysis, this kind of a score is uh, actually generating by the linear combination of the this calculation formula based on the this formula. And then sometimes Calculating the this PC score is very useful to predicting the about the how each component has a kind of a scoring systems depending on the some aspect of the of the raw original variable. Okay. I think that this is it. So this is the end of the chapter seven.